So are you excited about hiring a virtual assistant for your business? Well, I'm here to tell you that you are not ready to start outsourcing until you've done this first. And hey, before we dive in, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel to be notified every time I post a new video. So I know how excited you may be about bringing a virtual assistant into your business so that you can free up your time to focus more on the things that you love doing, like marketing, product creation, working with your one-to-one -one clients. But you are not ready to start outsourcing until you've sat down and created your outsourcing plan. So I'm going to walk you through exactly what that plan looks like so that you will be able to set yourself up for success when it's time to begin looking for your virtual assistant or next team member. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to create your outsourcing budget because you don't want to bring on an assistant and be like, hey, I'm just going to throw you all these random tasks and let's just see where we end up at the end of the month. No, you might end up with a giant bill without much to show for it because if you don't know first what your budget is and second what she's actually going to work on, then yes, you could end up with this crazy bill and your assistant hasn't been working on anything that really helps you to grow your business, grow your reach and grow your income. So you want to make sure that she's working on tasks that fit in with your budget. So the first thing, set that budget. So if you're just getting going, I recommend just starting with five hours a month. So when you look at about 25 to $35, $30 an hour, um, you're going to look at between $125 to $150 um, a month for outsourcing. So what do you do with those five hours? Well, now you know you have five hours, so she can maybe take care of your inbox. She can take care of all of your client communication tasks, you know, sending out uh, contracts that need to be signed, communicating, setting up calls, scheduling, all those kinds of little things so that you're not in your inbox answering a million questions over and over and over and over and over again. She can take that off your plate and you can really focus on showing up and serving your clients instead. So when you have a budget, then you'll know how much time you have to play with. So for instance, let's say that you like to post a new blog post every single week. You may write the blog post. Maybe you outsource that. Um, so you know about how much time that takes you to do that task, right? Because you're used to, hey, I've got my blog post here. Now I have to get it into WordPress. I have to come up with a really great title for it. I have to put it in the post and format it. So, you know, you've got headlines and you've got all the text and it's readable, easy for people to read. You're linking to other blog posts to maybe a freebie or a video or um, a resource or a tool or a program of yours. So you've got to get all those links in there. Uh, maybe you have a call to action in the, at the end of the blog post or somewhere in the middle. And so all of that has to be done. Plus you have to add an, a great image to it and then schedule that post. Oh, and don't forget, you got to make sure that you are doing your SEO on it. You've got keywords set and it's really ready to go for um, being published, right? So let's say that it takes you maybe even 30 minutes because if you've got that system down pat, then it's going to be pretty easy for you to continue to do that, right? But if an assistant comes in, then she can take that on for you and maybe you do, she spends let's just say like an hour or two every single month, just doing all of that for your month's worth of blog posts. So now you know, okay, so she's going to do two hours for that. I've got three hours to play with. So now she's taking the task of blog posts and now she's also doing customer support. So you've taken all of those things off of your plate. And then as you continue to grow the business as you continue to make more money, you can look at expanding your budget and then going from there. So once you know what kind of tasks, so you've got a budget set, you kind of know what tasks you want to be delegating that works within that budget and the amount of time that you have to play with. Then you next, the next thing you have to do is to look at the training you're going to have to create. So using our example of 
the blog post, well, the one, what you can do is you can sit down and you can record a video of yourself going through the process of getting a blog post onto your blog. So what do you do? Maybe you've got the blog post in a Word document. So you're going to take that, you're going to put it into the WordPress, you're going to do all of the formatting. So you're just going to walk her through all of the steps in a video. So then you can hand that video off to her and she can follow along and see all of the steps that you do. So she knows exactly what you are expecting from her. And then she can go and execute that task. You may also want to create an SOP, a standard operating procedures document that goes along with that training video. So she can easily refer to that without having to watch the video all the time. And so it may just have each of the steps listed out and then a checklist. So she can go through and be, yep, I got the image. Yes, I did the SEO. Yes, I've got the keywords. Yes, these are the categories that should be applied to in the post. This is the day it should be scheduled. And then you also want to make sure for a task like that, you have it organized in a folder. For instance, um, my assistant, we have a folder in Dropbox for my blog post project. We have a spreadsheet with the calendar. So we have the dates for each month. So we have a tab inside the spreadsheet um, for each month of the year. And then each day that the blog post will come out and it has the title of the blog post that's going to be released for that day. Then in that, that month's folder, for instance, let's just say January. Um, and so we would have a folder inside the January folder that would have the original blog post, the original, the images that we want to go with the blog post right in there. And then we have the schedule. So those blog posts are put to the schedule. So when she goes to add those to the blog, she knows, oh, this is the post that's going to be scheduled on this day. And then she can go through and do that for each month. And hey, this is the image that is going to go with this post. And so it's a really quick and easy task for her to complete. And so it frees up my time from having to do it, um, do that whole thing where I can focus on doing something like this, like recording this, this video for you instead of, you know, messing around in the blog, trying to do all of that, because that's not really a money task. Yes, it's a long term money task. So I like to refer to it as an indirect money task. And then there's direct money tasks. Direct money tasks are things that are going to quickly get you to money, right? And maybe that's creating the content for your course, because that's something you're going to be able to sell and make money with. And you can't outsource that, right? You have to sit down in front of the camera or in front of the screen with your slides, and you have to create all of that content. Now, you may be able to get a virtual assistant, yes, to absolutely help you with, you know, getting all of that program in onto your membership site, you know, getting those videos to a, your video editor, for instance, and packaging up that setting up the product in the shopping cart and, you know, creating the membership area so people can access your training. And um, she could put together some checklists and worksheets that go along with the content or a writer can do that. And you could have um, someone put together the sales page and the sales copy. But at the end of the day, it's you that has to create the actual training for it, right? You can't, have somebody else do that. Um, and so that's doing something like that, giving her to take care of like the blogging part of things frees up your time to do that money work. Now blogging, yes, it's valuable, right? It's going to help you educate your audience. It's going to help you with your search engine rank rankings because you've got content, you've got content that you can share with your email subscribers um, and your customers to keep them educated and engaged with you and your content. And it's going to give you something to also share across all of your social media platforms. And so it's a really great thing, especially when you have links in there, you have calls to action to your other things, but that's more of an indirect money task because it's not something that somebody's going to go to your post and boom, you're going to make a bunch of money right away, right? It's going to take time for you to distribute that content, to get eyeballs on that content. And then hopefully long-term, you know, you're going to have people maybe that come to your blog to read the content, they sign up for your email list, and then they purchase something down the road. Whereas of course, you're creating that content again, and boom, that's something that then you can promote and make income faster, more quickly, right? So anyway, I kind of just went on a tangent there and got off track 
of the topic of this video, but I felt like it was really important to kind of touch on that so that you know when you're sitting down to create your outsourcing plan, exactly the kind of things that you should be thinking about outsourcing and what the time is. All right, so let's just recap really quick. So you have your budget set, right? So you have your budget set, you know how much time you have to play with every month. Then you're gonna sit down, you're gonna be thinking about what are my direct money making tasks and what are my indirect money making tasks and which things should I outsource to my assistant based on the allotted time that I have to play with every month. So in our example, we talked about maybe just starting with five hours. So what can she do in five hours? And here's the thing, five hours, no, it doesn't really sound like a lot of time, right? But you would be surprised how much a virtual assistant can get done for you in your business with just five hours, especially if they're very skilled and they're just awesome at what they do. They can fly through the work, man, especially if you are providing them with proper training and resources for them to be successful at their job. Then you're going to have five hours that you could sit down. Imagine what you could do with five hours. You could sit down and you could record your entire course that you could then sell. Like instead of you messing around in your blog and trying to, you know, oh, find the images that go with this and do all these little things that are just busy work tasks that really aren't helping having a big impact on your bottom line really quickly. So yes, you have to do all those things like creating the content for your blog and, and promoting that and getting it all over the place but you don't have to be the one to do it. Your time is better spent on, you know, creating content for your business, on working one-to-one with your clients, showing up and serving them. If you are, you know, all your energy is being drained by all of these busy work tasks, then you're not going to be showing up as the best version of you for your clients, right? And so they're going to feel let down because you're just so drained and tired. And then you start dreading those calls because you just don't want to do it. You don't want to show up because you're just like, oh, I'm so overwhelmed with all this stuff that I have to do to keep up in my business. So if you are feeling like that, it's definitely time for you to consider outsourcing a virtual assistant. So in the description box below this video, you will find a link to a free workbook that includes seven steps to start delegating 80% of your to-do list. So I want you to click that link, go and download that workbook, and you'll get started and looking at all of the different things in your business that you can get off of your plate so that you can refocus on all of those money tasks and the things that you really love doing in your business.